And for the final time, we're back at the Nottingham Tennis Centre for the British Open Wheelchair Tennis Championships in the final, final week and show you on centre court between the world number one and the world number two in women's tennis, Yui Kamiji of Japan. And the Dutch player, Dida de Groot. We've had the uh, toss. We're going to get uh, things underway in just a few seconds' time. There's the uh, Dutch woman. And uh, Yui, the number one seed, will be ready to start in just a few moments' time. So, yeah, last final of the week here in Nottingham. There's Yui, who has uh, got a fantastic record. We'll get into that in a moment. But uh, Megan Bradley, 13-year-old from Leyland in Lancashire, did the coin toss. Started playing wheelchair tennis two years ago. Always wanted to play sport, but had never been able to up to this point. Huge tennis fan has been uh, participating in the Tennis Foundation's British Open Junior Tournament. She was a part of Lucy Shuka's team from London 2012. So uh, good luck to Megan in the future for her future. Alongside me again, the man who's been uh, watching the Brits progressing and a rapid rate of knots too, which has been nice. The performance okay. director for the Tennis Foundation, Geraint Richards, joins me once again. Are you Geraint? All good? Yes, uh, warmer day today and looking forward to this women's final. Give you all the head-to-heads uh, -head and stats when we get an appropriate moment, but uh, let's see how Dida de Groot serves straight off. Good opening point from the Dutch woman after that uh, winning combination of the women's doubles yesterday. So again, we have a left-hander up against a right-hander. Kamiji, the left-handed Japanese, against the right-handed player from the Netherlands. Age-wise, one's 23, Yui, and uh, 21 for Dida de Groot. Actually, we have December, actually, to be absolutely accurate. Big double for that one. It's near the baseline, the uh, service line. Yeah, Dida does have a tendency to throw in a few double faults, and uh, she's one of the rising stars though, uh, of the women's game, and uh, she plays so positively and aggressively. So hopefully she won't hit too many of those doubles. Q double number two. So, job done for the Dutch woman. Say so one of uh, great emergencies over the last year. 21 in December, started playing at the age of three and has just reached her peak in the world ranking so far. Number two, got there last week. Uh, Yui has been number one on and off since 2014, so she knows that position pretty well. Back there again. She won the last three meetings without dropping a set. 6-4-6-3 in Paris, 6-2-6-2 in Japan, 6-3-6-4 in Melbourne this year. Love it would be quite nice to have a three-set match today. Two fairly, say, routine, but certainly straightforward straight sets wins today, so... Quite nice for the uh, well, small crowd because a lot of them are watching the mixed doubles final on court six to uh, have something to cheer. Love 
That is like a house on fire, the Dutch woman. That's oh, me. Oh. She's a she's a, a woman with a mission. Not hanging around here. Comedians either had a look in. I think uh, it's a big contrast of styles here. Uh, Kamiji's quite a terrier retriever, whereas Dida actually goes for the corners and the spaces. Wow, <laughs> to love. Head-to-head -head record, their 11th meeting, and um, Kamiji has an 8-2 record. One of those is from a default. So she's actually in a in a proper match, if you like. She's actually only beaten her once. Yeah, it's going to be. It's all going to depend on whether Dita can maintain this confidence, and uh, if she can, she can be quite destructive as a player. Don't why I'm so surprised, but <laughs> I am. So one double fault, one ace so far. I think it's because the aces in the women's game are quite rare, that's why. <laughs> we don't see many of them. We don't see many of them in, in the game in general, but even fewer in the women's game. A bit of pressure on the Dutch woman's surf here. Much of it self inflicted, must be said. give your opponent cheap easy points so at least make them play one more shot oh, seems to have so much time today to play her shots and, and decide what she's going to do and how she's going to play them um, I thought that the Generally, Yui's the more aggressive of the two, but Dida's winning in that battle. She's keeping Yui right back on the behind the baseline, so he's getting a bit more time to uh, to play her shots. Make it look incredibly easy under a little bit of pressure on the serve for the first time. But uh, first three games have gone the way of Dida de Groot. Last time. She won against Yui was in Sydney back in January 7576. All their meetings have been on hardcore. They've never played on any other surface in their uh, 10 meetings prior to this. All on this surface or versions of this surface. And so the only other win for Dida came when Kimiji retired in the third set in France 2016. But the uh, win loss record pretty good for Dida this year. 19 wins, 7 defeats, semi finalists 
in Rio. Of course, she lost the doubles final as well with the Iski Griffion in the Paralympics. But um, Yui has quite a lead over Dida, considering they are one and two in the world. She's 700 points ahead of her. It's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a lot to uh, claw back. But the difference now is that Dida is in all the Grand Slams as well, so has a chance to pick up a lot more points uh, this year. So um, I think it c I think there could be a good rivalry growing between these two for the for the next few years up until Tokyo. Talked quite a bit about um, the Dutch system. We talk about Japanese system as well. Maybe when we get to our next uh, break, when they change ends again. That's more like it. That's more kind of what we expected to do more of in this match so far uh, we've seen her do a lot of in the in the past the strength hmm, so a bit too fiery <coughs> oh, is that playing air balls when there's so much wind around isn't it it is especially if uh, you're not going to put a bit more on that ball because it can drift in in the wind uh, that is uh, how you does play sometimes just to be patient and see if she can create an opportunity with a short ball and if you're watching the girls as they come in and take it early on uh, inside the baseline that that's when they start to uh, cut down the opponent's time to recover and win some of their shots so it's about trying to see when you can create an opportunity and then come in on the next ball and finish it off. Problems with, problems with the ball lands at your wheels, not much you can do about it. Actually. <laughs> yeah, she's getting those more oh often than not. And uh, U.S. hasn't got the fastest serve in the women's game. Sits up and does beg to be hit sometimes. Yeah, I know she's been working on it for the last uh, eight months because she realises that's an area that she can improve on. And with these girls now taking advantage of a weaker serve, she has to do something to, to ensure that she wins her service games. Now what she does, and she's on the board at long last, the uh, world well, number one a little bit of pressure here and uh, at least got herself within two games now of Dida de Groot actually unbeaten in her last 10 matches is Yui hasn't been unbeaten since or hasn't lost since the Wimbledon semi-final to Sabine Ellerbrook that was in three sets I think a lot of people had her down to win Wimbledon this year but Ellerbrook had other ideas yeah I think probably Wimbledon is is a bit tricky for Yui in terms of mobility. Uh, she prefers a harder court. So it was uh, it was a bit of a shame that she didn't get there because uh, she's done so well in doubles with Geordie at uh, Wimbledon. Yeah, it's a good combination. Obviously, that's going to be on hold for a bit now. Okay, so who's she going to partner at the US Open? Do we? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Don't we know yet, do we? Has she actually declared that yet? Yes. Yeah, Can't be many options. Um, uh, yes, I'll go and find out. Or I'll just get a message to someone okay. to find out. <laughs>
What a good rally that was from both women, both sides of the net. Playing it from side to side, trying to work an opening against the opposition, but uh, Kamiji it is who comes up with the winner in the end. Longest rally by far in the match and best quality rally in a completely different district, that one, from what we've seen so far. Do you have the, have the word? So I just found out that uh, it's going to be another Japanese-British pairing at uh, US Open. She's going to be playing with Lucy. Lucy, okay. It was in combination. Well, could have, a, could have a Grand Slam champion there. be nice, wouldn't it, for Lucy, if uh, she could help Yui to, uh, to victory later this month. Well, next month, isn't it? It'll be September for the wheelchair tennis. Cause it comes at the back end of the... Uh, U.S. Open. Is that an exclusive? I, th I think that was. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Even as performance Breaking director, news. I didn't know that Breaking one. Breaking <laughs> news, how about that? To get your Sky Sports news, we've got the breaking <laughs> stories here. Good get. Oh, that's a way to finish off a point. Great gap, but then the group says, all right, you're not going to get a second chance. That's what she's uh, been doing so well in the last few months, just coming in and uh, playing aggressively and finishing off the point. too much. Just a little bit too much. But the game looks pretty sound today. Don't see uh, too many errors creeping in. That was just a uh, marginal. But, um, game seemed to be in pretty good fettle. This uh, service game a bit tough though. I'm not managed to get over the line. I think Yui's wheelchair does make some strange noises. <laughs> kind of rattles along. Have <laughs> we got any three and one? Um, WD40. <laughs> bit loose just a bit loose a couple of points there where the group who in the first four games has been exemplary just slightly dropped her game a little bit and you can't do that against the world number one no and that's uh that's what you uh, yui will keep doing she won't let uh, dida get away she'll keep uh, keep uh, getting at her heels and uh not let her get away and as long as Dida doesn't then lose confidence, Dida should be okay. But it's always tricky then that you can't actually pull away. And then you try a little bit harder or you go for a little bit more of an angle. And that's when the mistakes come in. But uh, if nothing else, Yui's uh, resilient and uh, will keep fighting. So uh, we could be in for that three-setter. So, Mr. Performance Director, give me your evaluation of the first two finals today. We'll have a quick swig of coffee. Well, Alfie... Uh, Looked a bit nervous at the start of that uh, final, but uh, then came back so well and uh, got back to 4-4. And then again, just a little lack of uh, concentration on the critical points there, and then Gustavo pulled away. 
and then did the second the same in the second set uh, but again you know all credit to Gustavo he came in as favorite he's played well all tournament and uh, and he's come out uh, and he's won it and credit to Alfie still only 19 and he's in a final of a British Open Super Series and uh, no no uh, nothing wrong with losing to the world number one uh, Andy, a little bit more disappointing. Uh, Wags, as we said, so uh, experienced, and uh, he was just the better player by far today. Both straight sets. See whether we get a three-set match here in the women's singles. Baked back by Gamiji, but uh, Groot just trying to up that intensity again. She's uh, got the measure of the Kamiji serve at the moment. She hasn't really got a weapon to trouble her that much, just to get the ball in play. Second serve is very weak though, and should be capitalised on, and is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just what the doctor ordered and kind of what I predicted would happen. That second serve just sits there and says, hit me. Yeah, yeah, and it's quite short as well, so Dita can get inside that uh, baseline and and just put it to the corners. This serve isn't exactly a rocket, but at least if she gets it in, it's a bit more penetrative than the second. Well, that's better. That's an element of uh, this game I've seen a great deal of so far. Another passing shot. A couple in the match so far. Brilliant. Both sides of the court. And are on the backhand wing. Now the forehand side. <laughs> Is that annoying? Or just slipped out of her hand that racket? Because uh, I think she thought that she had that point one. Probably felt quite good when it left the racket. Oh, right on the line! Right on the line! Kamiji looked back at it. The umpire looked at it. The linesman looked at it. They all decided it wasn't gonna. So they transform itself into anything other than being in. So in it is, and again the Kamiji serve under a bit of pressure. Let's see how far De Groot comes in on the second serve. Quite a way, I suspect. <coughs> she comes. Oh, good. Oh, she's that twice in the game so far, this game, and just uh, gets her nose in front, trying to make it parity. So not to be chances for the Dutch woman to break, but she didn't. And uh, after that runaway start for the world number two, she's uh, pegged back to three all. And uh, 
the conditions are playing a part. Certainly the wind is up. At the moment it's dry, but uh, some ominous black clouds around. Hopefully we can get through this. And the uh, mixed doubles final taking place just behind on court six before the end. Oh, Dina did some scrambling there, didn't she? Virtually out of her chair at one point. Absolutely fabulous rally hey, there. So uh, the advantage was with one, then it was with the other, and then, as you said, uh, Dida just launching herself to try and retrieve a high backhand uh, and then winning the point. Ready for that uh, point back again, maybe at the next break. Good. Third double. Perfect. Well, she couldn't have gone down the court and put that ball in a better position. And right on the line. Get there. Quizzical look from Yui, but um, Leisman didn't call it, so flush from the line, he thought. Wait for a 4 3 lead. Oh, just out of reach. Oh, too good. Too good. That is a return of serve. Which, uh, unreturnable. Just warming to the task now. A bit. It's a great tennis right now. Two girls playing at their best. This is some of the best tennis we've seen uh, all week. Uh, both hitting it hard, both hitting it fairly low, and uh, both hitting some tremendous winners.
Too good. Well, shame after a great deep first serve that that, that was a backup. Warming to the task, well and truly now. Just can't quite get that extra point at the moment to uh, get a nose in front, but another chance here, another advantage point for the Japanese. Two minds, and unfortunately, she played two yeah. shots. Basically, a backhand and a forehand, virtually at the same time. that one up. <laughs> it's frustrating, very frustrating because um, she uh, gets the feel at the moment that some of the bounces aren't particularly going her way. Ta tapes are working to the benefit of the Japanese and she's finding it very hard to close out this game and again another break point. Yeah, some inevitability about that I'm afraid. Kamiji just uh, getting herself in that game and getting closer and closer. And uh, the group's is not a happy girl at the moment, just bouncing the ball on the surface. And they go for the change round. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, um, that very lengthy point. It seemed to go for about 10 minutes, but I think it was quite that long. Involving these two, where um, Dida virtually tipped herself out of the chair. Maybe, maybe not. I think we saw it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, and uh, that was uh, just a great uh, angle from uh, Yui there. I think this could be the one where oh, Yui just stretching and uh, hustling to get that ball back, but not quite close enough. I wonder whether they'll show the one where she was in two minds. What that's showing ah. is that I don't know what's happened here, but I think Yui's got the bit between her teeth a little bit, and she decided that well, I've had enough of this, and uh, I'm going to start hitting that ball a little bit harder, a little bit flatter, and uh, and she came up with some pretty good winners in that last uh, game. Let's see if she can maintain that momentum. Well, she's seeing the ball about as flat as she possibly can. It is going what a couple of inches over the tape, yeah. it's not very much more. I have the advantage and also of getting the tape a couple of times, but. She's got a nose in front, 4 3. And um, mentally, DeGroote's just gone AWOL. Which she can do, unfortunately. That, that is a tendency that she has. So occasionally just lose focus. Wind playing havoc with the uh, ball toss. the dealer of the opening five or six games gone.
Not gonna make it. Gets about as central as she can with that wheelchair and she's virtually on the line. The centre service line that is. Oh it caught the back of the line and she let it go. <laughs> Thought it was going long. It didn't. Nice smile to accompany that though. her first. Chance for an instant break back here by the Groot. Mm. Tame forehand, halfway up the net. Again, getting into a... Uh, position to win the game and then a cheap mistake. Oh, just a little bit too much. So from having advantage point herself, now Kamiji has a point for a 5-3 lead. Beautifully done, and she's still got it in her locket to do that kind of thing. Yeah, let's go back to the positioning of the chair. When she's on the ad side, she's very, very close to the centre. When she's on the juice side, she's actually quite a way away from the centre. She obviously it's an angle thing, or the way she feels comfortable in terms of trajectory of the serve, or what? Because look there, she's a long way across. Yeah. I think. I think it uh, it relates to where she wants to move naturally after she's hit the serve, and sometimes it'll be easier then to recover to get. So she's right on the service line or the, the center line there, and it'll just help her get central on a return. With not having the strongest serve, as we mentioned already, you have to be ready to cover all all bases when it comes back. Oh, like sure. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very well done, and eventually gets the game sorted and nailed, and she, for the first time in the match, has a two-game lead by three, and so it's over to you, Dida, trying to serve to stay in this first set. Only three losses all year, Kamiji, in the calendar year. So 42 wins, 3 losses. It's not a bad return, is it? Fantastic record. Not going to get that one, though. 15 it's very patchy from De Groot at the moment. She, she's having moments of inspiration like that and then dumping the ball in the net. It's, it's kind of a real patchwork quilt of, of quality at the moment.
Oh, too good. What a great backhand that is. Double again. Double number four. off the baseline does she cramps up for a room has got the way of kind of freeing her arms for that shot and there we are with set point Oh, not going to get that back. <laughs> it's me. That was traveling. Just what you need to uh, reclaim set point against you. Sun's out again. Got quite warm. You took your jacket off. <laughs> too much of an angle. Didn't need to be that precise. No, no. Went for a little bit too much when uh, she didn't need to. Set point number two. Second time she's uh, been in that powerless position. And uh, gets it back to Juice. Not sure what's happening on the uh, far side. The Brits was Brit on both sides of the net, actually, in the mixed doubles final. But uh, try to get an update on that in a few moments. Into a second set, I can tell you. And first set comes and it goes to the Japanese by six games to three. And uh, after a very promising start by the Dutch woman, the world number two, it's the Japanese world number one who comes through by six games to three. Now I did mention earlier to talk about the um, Japanese system because we talked about the Dutch system yesterday and uh, the fact they brought through loads of men in the past. There's only really one in the top ten at the moment. but women are plenty. Um, Japanese have done pretty well, haven't they? The, 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 both men's and women's wheelchair tennis. Yeah, the Japanese men, uh, off the back of Shingo Kunieda coming through and having a fantastic few years as world number one, uh, I think that spurred a lot of the other Japanese on, and I think they have uh, three or four men now in the top 15, uh, which is great for them. And uh, with Yui coming up as well, they, they've got a few girls coming through as well. It's good to see as well when we go to World Team Cup, the Japanese also have some very strong juniors now coming up. Um, so it puts them in a very strong place uh, for the future and, those, and they're one of our big 
uh, competitors that, that we're keeping our eye on because uh, we know that coming up to Tokyo it'll only ramp up in, uh, in Japan in terms of interest, in terms of more players. I'm sure Shingo and Yui will step up again to, to improve their performances before their home crowd. Uh, so we really need to keep our eye on what's going on over there. Because Shingo had some injuries, didn't he? Which is why his quality went down a bit. He, he was world number one and then got some injuries and uh, started to fall down the rankings and the quality of his game went with it. Yeah, and I think uh, his injuries coincided as well at a time when uh, he started to lose. Well, he lost, he lost a couple of matches to Joachim Gerrard from Belgium. And that sort of cracked that invincibility that he had around him and uh, that aura of invincibility and then Gordon started to think well I can beat him and uh, some of the other boys Gustavo started to think I can beat him and then he started to lose a few more it was linked to his injury as well but then uh, so he's had a couple of operations it's taken him a long time to come back but he's getting back to, to some of his best tennis at the moment well the Japanese woman who is number one is uh, one set to the good against the uh, that's number one. Well, number two, Dida Groot. 23 year old against 20 year old at the moment. 21 in December is Dida. That's say some great retrieving by Yui Shink. Getting that one back. That's well out of her reach. Dita could have a really good show reel for this match and make out that she'd won it. Because even though she's 6-3 down, she has played some great points like that. And there's another one. Yeah, I think we analysed that uh, first set. The way she started, playing quite dominant and rolling onto the ball, hitting to the corners, not giving Yui a chance to trade with her, really. Yui was just defending. And then the change happened when Yui started to hit a bit harder, a bit flatter, and Dida couldn't quite get to those uh, powerful shots. She started this second set a little bit more positive again, and has hit two fantastic winners. A chance for maybe some break points here. Going long. So, three break points in the opening game of set number two, but of course, she started like a train in set number one. So, let's see whether the Japanese bullet train could come through now. Ooh, just too much. It's alright though, she's got two more chances. Obviously, we have three, that kind of. Uh, it out and hope it's, it's pretty uh, acceptable. Mm. Not twice though. Well, that was a difficult one to return. Well, good attack. She got the return back early and uh, that rather unsettled Kamiji at the other side of the net. Kamiji unable to do anything to get the ball back in play. And that's exactly what De Groot wanted. Early break in set number two. And it's a uh, set to love to Kamiji. And a game to love to De Groot who now will serve. She's at the end that was causing the problem with the sun. Yes, obviously it won't happen at this time of the day, but it's causing a lot of problem for the uh, quad doubles yesterday. Back of the chair. It's so difficult to return those. Ah! 
Yui on the move very quickly on the Deezer serve now. Kind of almost before she's in her service motion, she's coming in. There she is again, taking the ball early. by taking the first game and it looks like she's going to hand it straight back three break points for world number one Fifteen, two comparison on their receiving positions on first serves because she's just going to be right on the baseline she gets the ball back in play Oh. Gets passed this time. So two down, one to go. Pretty much put that wherever she wanted down that wing anyway. And Kimiji breaks back to 30 and one game all. And uh, certainly more aggression in the Japanese player. That's a half of the first set, early stage of the second. Hand cross forehand cross court. That's what I'm trying to say. Rolled forehand cross court to uh, give her the point. about receiving position it looks like Khadid is actually more advanced than Yui is here. she's actually inside the call when she takes it on first serve down the line beautifully Again, where that works, it's a thing of beauty, that shot. Really is one of the best shots in women's sense. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. <coughs> when you're looking at the uh, return of serve, Dida does take that ball very early. The only problem is at the moment she's hitting it straight back into uh, Yui's hitting zone. Yeah, and again able to capitalize on one break point anyway still another one to go mm, pushback that was wasn't a stroke as such kind of just taking it off the chair yeah and I think that's probably one of the disadvantages of coming in too far if it is actually a good deep serve then you're stuck with what to do with the ball Too long. So, 
small margins, not uh, massively long, but a couple of good chances have gone at the begging to uh, get them those in front in the second set. Four off a second serve. Ooh, she'll be annoyed with the serve there because again, we have highlighted this in the first set. That second set is cannon fodder, really. And you should be getting that back because there's nothing on it. There's no spin. There's nothing. There's no sp no pace. There's nothing on it, really, is there? There's, there's there's nothing on it. But another disappointing thing was even if that ball had gone over, she wasn't doing anything with it. It was just going back towards uh, Kamichi's forehand again. You know, take it on, but take it on and, and do something. At least if you take it on and you you just missed the winner or something, at least you feel as though, well, I took it on. If you're just going to lamely put it in the net on a second serve, it's almost like a double whammy and uh, just no point in doing that. When somebody hits the, the ball as hard as she does and as accurately as she does, you, you wonder why she's so tentative at times. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, she doesn't, we've seen a couple of times as well, she she sometimes just goes for too much. If she's coming in on a second serve and she's taking the ball between the, the baseline and the service line, she can just punch it into a corner and be very effective. As opposed to going for too much or for going for too much angle, just do the basic things very well and you've cut down Yui's recovery time and you've probably won the point without you even getting to it. But trying to do too much or or the alternative on that last point, trying to do nothing with the ball, make a decision and then go for it, really. Well, let's see what she's with the serve. The serve's been a little bit erratic today. 2-1 to Kamiji. <laughs> it's a real curate egg of a match, this, from her point of view. Some really good stuff, great winners like that. And then some, some basic stuff from the world number two. You just think, you could put the best bits of your game together and just get rid of everything else. It would be a fantastic match, this. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I remember watching Dida when she was a, a young teenager playing in junior masters in Tarbes. And uh, she played against a girl from Colombia in the final. And she didn't lose a point in the first set. And she was just rolling in and just stroking balls to the corners. And at that point, a lot of people said she's the next, next best of the year. Mm. And she's got it in her armory. She's got the shots. She just needs that consistency, a little bit more yeah, mental great. robustness. And I think she could be untouchable. I don't think, and it's not an easy thing to train, as you all know, working with the people you work with, that she's got the mentality of Esther. This is the difference. She might have the talent, but I don't think she's got the steely determination or the mindset that Esther had. Yeah, I don't think many have that, because Esther was uh, one of a kind. But you need to, as you said, try and aim to have that sort of determination and that 
focus that you're not going to be put off. I remember also in Japan once seeing Esther. I'd, I'd gone the wrong way to uh, to the uh, changing rooms and I ended up going around the back of one of the courts. And there was Esther Vigier on her own, headphones on, just doing some band work. Out of sight, out of mind. And at that time she was one of the few girls doing that band work. She knew that that was what she had to do. She wanted to remain unbeaten on this great run that she had. And to have that determination is very tough. But if you have it, then maybe that's what it takes to get to the very, very top. Well, she is now world number two for the first time, so she's not far away. As I did mention, there is 700 points between her and Yui. And, of course, that will now extend if Yui goes on to win this. Because there are points for this, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. sums it up pretty well. Couldn't have put it better myself. I think one of the great things though on uh, Dida's side in this is what you mentioned earlier. She's 20 just going on 21. She's still very young. She's still got a lot to learn and I think her future is uh, very, very bright indeed. Again, picking cherries, top draw shot. Uh, All yeah. the right things in place, right kind of pace, right kind of accuracy, right kind of direction on that shot. Keeps the Japanese honest, 30 all. Now she has a break point. Now what does she do here? Does she go aggressive? Does she really attack it? That's what she's been doing for the most part of this match, so why should she change it? Oh. Too good. That's what Yui can do. No, didn't really do anything wrong with that, the group, but Yui just too good on this occasion. Back to Juice. ready to receive. Just pick up some rubber from somewhere, might come off the tyres, isn't it? But rubber at the back. Set. Yep, had her twisting and turning the wrong way, looking in the wrong way when that ball came back over the net. Long, can't even hardly get out of this game, but that's another point for 4 1. Yeah. Yep, go sailing long, so yeah, three games between them now. In set number two, uh, whatever she's trying is not quite working. She's uh, changed her game plan a little bit, trying to be a bit more aggressive, then a bit more passive, and then aggressive again, and whatever element of her game she's trying doesn't seem to be quite working. No, and as we said, you know, 
One of Yui's strengths is uh, that she's uh, consistent and uh, she's sometimes like a brick wall. She'll keep getting that ball back and once she gets that back with a little bit of zip on it, then you're under pressure. And I think since the middle of that uh, second set, uh, that first set, that's what Yui's been doing. You can see Dita getting a bit frustrated here in this replay. As you said, she's hitting some fantastic winners, but they're just not consistent enough. She's not hitting and putting them together. And she'll hit a great winner and then hit a couple of very loose losers. Another one just dragging that ball down into the bottom of the net. No. And there probably that was a winner. Mm. Yeah, but the problem is it's like a two for one offer, isn't it? Yeah. You, yeah. you, you'll get one occasionally, but more often than not, it's either in the net or it's long or it's wide. Her uh, unforced errors percentage is way too high. Now's that one, though. Good forehand down the line. Yeah, it's a fair, fair few of those in the match so far. observed this before but doesn't half rattle along <laughs> her wheelchair just you can hear it clanking along like, like some faulty steam train or something it's, it's, it's <laughs> got really so you, you can't hear most wheelchairs on court you can barely hear but that one just clanks and I'm sure it's worth thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of pounds you're going to tell me but it's not quite who day like in terms of what it's worth but but uh, OXR, I think uh, Japan's biggest manufacturer, I think most of their top players, including Shingo, use an OX uh, chair as well. Well, again, uh, took all the pace off it, just rolled it in, didn't need oh to have a lot yeah. of pace. Just position this time from De Groot, who's not given up, to be fair to her, she's still hanging in there. Uh, time is rapidly running out if she's going to make any serious impression on this match. Yes, long. So she escapes, I think is the best way to describe from that service gate. Four games to two. So Japanese still two games away, potentially from straight sets win here. Still a chance for the group, because we know the Kamichi serve is not the greatest. Just depends how offensive and how aggressive she wants to be. The time is now really if she's going to get back into this match. shot she played so well in the last game she had a few great winners she tempered that aggression she started this game off with a very good uh, return of serve and then we get something like that out of it I'm not quite sure what she's going for two bounces uh, either, some of these balls that are sitting there looking for one bounce really why is she why is she going with the option of two 
probably just a little bit of uh, doubt in the mind, a bit, little bit of uh, not knowing what to do, and uh, by the time you've let that ball bounce twice, it's gone. Yeah, I think she realises it's not her day. Just can't quite put a raised game together, not often enough anyway, to trouble the world number one. And it looks like extending her unbeaten run from Wimbledon onwards. Good hustle by Dita de Groot. Let me talk about the upsides of her game. That is certainly one of them. When she's in the mood and in that kind of groove. Again, just moving Yui around and uh, putting one wide and then finishing it off nice and confidently. Have to do just to ease it back into court down the line it goes two excellent points in this game well, I think you said it earlier you know she's got all the shots there she can put them all together she'd be unstoppable just needs to cut out some of these errors put it back to juice Remember, it's only one break to get it back to 4-3. Now, this is where you roll the dice, isn't it? And say, right, OK, I've got a vantage point here. I want to be all over this serve. Yeah, but let's do something with it. Let's have, don't have a nothing shot on this. Eased it back in, and basically that set up and said, put me away. She did. she does that she has a, a fantastic coach back in the Netherlands who must be quite frustrated at times with her but um, I'm sure they're going to uh, work out how we take uh, Dida to the next level must be from a coach's point of view, a mixture of frustration and elation yeah. to know what you could possibly eventually have on your hand and what you've got now, very much a raw product, even though she's world number two. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's when it's really, really exciting for a coach. And then it's down to the coach to really work with the player, build that relationship with the player and, and find what buttons to press to make them tick and to make them win. And that's the art of great coaching. And, uh, and I know her coach... Uh, 
has been travelling with her quite extensively uh, over the past couple of years and together they both uh, work very hard and I'm sure that uh, she knows that the, the future could be very very bright well she's got a break point as I get attacked by a fly <laughs> get all the elements here don't we a little glimmer a slight chance a little opening here for the Dutch woman to get within the game The uh, second two was so slow, I think it actually caught Dita de Groot completely unaware. She didn't think the ball was ever going to reach her, <laughs> quite frankly. This was an uh, element of surprise. You take uh, pace up it totally, it just loops its way in. But, uh, if it was a tactic, it proved to be a very effective one. Close this game out. Uh, it's her turn to get a little bit annoyed with herself. Thinking, well, I'm almost there. I'm almost home and hosed. One more game, it'll be 5 2, and then I can uh, smell victory, but fishing line still a way off. Long. So we still have a final on our hands. We still have two potential outcomes, which are more than conceivable. Four, three now. The break is over, and uh, she has broken back. And so, as they go back to have their change of ends, there's quite a bit for uh, for both players to think about here. Yep, uh, lots of courage there from uh, Dida. Uh, if she'd lost either of those two games there, I think uh, we'd almost have said it's all over. Uh, but she comes back and she, she gets back to 4-3 on serve now. And uh, she's playing with a little bit more confidence, not making so many unforced errors. Getting that ball back, uh, making you hit one more ball. And uh, she's back in this match. That's why she was getting annoyed, but I haven't seen that frustration for a couple of games now. Again, that was the point where she took Yui very wide and then took the ball on one bounce, reducing uh, Yui's recovery time and finished the point off. She's like a little uh, pocket battleship, isn't she, the way she moves around. A very, very busy uh, player in, in the chair all the time. So, Dita's got it back. Parity. Of course, it won't be that way until she completes this service game in her favour. But break back. Can't be hitting backhands like that. Oh. 
pretty close. We were on that side, right by that line. Probably a couple of inches, if that. And that being a winner. Oh, that's what you don't need. That is just what you don't need in this stage. Little things like that really make you think it's not my day. <laughs> uh, doesn't hit the net and go up, it hits the net and goes down. That's uh, impossible to retrieve. Again, though, what a response from Dido. Didn't dwell on it, put it out of her mind. And a great point. Still one more needed, though, to uh, even get it back to juice. Never really bounced in the chair. She's leaning into that shot, never under control. And uh, all the good work that was done in that previous game, undone in the space of a couple of minutes. Absolutely. Again, you know, if you're stretching, if you're not there to make a good contact, just pop it back up deep and turn that into a bit more of a, a neutral situation and then recover back as opposed to going for too much and dumping it in the net. So the ball's on the racket of Kamiji. She can see out this service game. She'll win the British Open. Mm, Dita still has a few things to say potentially well, about that. Perfect drop shot. This time, a couple of times during the course of that, I think you put it away. You put it away. You've got the angle there. Just puts it straight back with the racket yeah. of Kamiji. this match or not? <laughs> the moment, seemingly not. Two break back points. Too early. That was ambitious. Threatening the serve and threatening the serve are two different things like that. Back to Juice. Two points away from the match. Well, she was. Now she's not. Another potential break point to bring it back to 4 5. I think I'd have grey hair if I was her coach. <laughs> well, I've got grey hair, but I think I'd have prematurely grey.
So here we are. Maybe the denouement of the women's singles because number one, Yui Kamiji has her first match point. <laughs> Not yeah. done yet. Not quite. There is life in Dida de Groot yet. Coming back to Deuce. Just to take our camera out at the same time, but I think he's okay. I'm <laughs> well, getting value for money, aren't we? Extending this a little bit longer. Yeah, still potentially into a third set, but long way to go before we get to that stage yet. Just long. And there is the break. Now, the question is, can she back it up and get it back to five all? And uh, get this match extended potentially into a fifth, uh, into a third, or uh, into a tie break, maybe. But, um, yeah, that, um, that came out everything, did it, in terms of the good, the bad, and the very, very ugly? <laughs> it did, and I think uh, part of the good, though, was uh match point down Dida actually went for went for the shot and uh, actually hit a winner uh and there i think that was uh, a point after that where she's actually hitting the ball very cleanly so it's not as if uh Yui lost that match point i think uh Dida actually won that point fair and square very brave of her and she's got kept this match going again showing how Dida comes in takes that ball nice and early It always, always amazes me about Kamiji, the reach she's got, because she's well, she's quite small, obviously quite low in the, the chair, but she, the reach that she gets from that position, and the ball she gets back from that position. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't look as though she's got extra long arms, like some of the players tend to have. Uh, job for the world number two is to hold on to her serve. Potentially take this uh, either to a tie break or she could break Kamiji, perhaps win the second set. Just wide. Number seven, in terms of double faults, compared to Kamiji's one. So that eighth double fault brings up a second match point for Yui Kamiji.
Oh, jumps into the net after some great retrieving there. She put every nerve and sinew into retrieving that ball, but ultimately she dumped her last shot of the Nottingham Open into the net, and Yui Kamiji has done it in two. It was quite hard work in that second set for her in the end. There were just glimmers and glimpses of the best of Dida de Groot, but it is the world number one, Yui Kamiji, who keeps that unbeaten record going from the beginning of July. And only three losses all year for the Japanese, and 9-2 now ahead to head with Dida de Groot. Yes, uh, fantastic for, for Yui. I mean, to have that sort of record for this year is uh, shows how dominant she is at the moment. Uh, Dida's world number two will have many more chances. It wasn't quite her day today, just a few too many unforced errors, but, uh, but Yui uh, being so consistent from the back and then attacking when she needed to meant that uh, she came out on top in two sets. So we'll have a presentation for the women's singles in a few moments' time. We'll also have the uh, presentation from what's been happening on court number six. And it uh, looks like Lucy Shuka and Stefan Uday have uh, beaten Dana Mathewson and Alfie Hewitt. 6 3 7 5. We'll have the presentation for that as well. Uh, I'll, I'll say goodbye if you want to go. <laughs> Do you want to go? <laughs> Garayan wants to go. He's just making that little motion like he, he wants to slip my throat or something, but I don't think he does. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great experience working with you over the last couple of days, and uh, hope to do it again next year. Garayan, look forward to it. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we will conclude things here with a couple of presentations. We'll have the presentation first for the women's singles, which I say has been one, six, three, six, four by Yui Kamiji against Dida de Groot. So we haven't actually in any of the finals today had more than two sets. Straight sets in the men's singles, straight sets in the quad singles, straight sets in the women's singles, and as you've just heard, in the mixed singles as well. Lucy Shuka and Stefan Uday have come through 6-3-7-5 in their match with Dana Matthewson and Alfie Hewitt. So not a great day for Alfie, really. Not winning a set today and... Uh, Lucy Shuka will be delighted to have come through in the mixed singles, mixed doubles rather, and uh, the British Open Wheelchair Tennis Championships virtually at an end. It's um, been a slightly weather ravaged few days, but we've got it done on time. It's about half past two on Sunday afternoon, so uh, the organiser will be delighted that everything was wrapped up and we didn't have to send things indoors. The weather has been a little bit inclement today as well, but no rain, just a bit of wind some uh, threats of the wet stuff that has she hasn't happened as yet so uh, two presentations to come on Santa Court before we wrap things up I think uh, the women are ready so uh, I think we are pretty much ready to go Kirsty are you ready not quite holding a microphone any second now possibly conversations occurring but I think uh, she's ready and poised to uh, bring us the presentation. Here we go. Welcome to the presentation ceremony uh, for the ladies singles. I'd like to welcome Sir Jeffrey Cass, President of the Tennis Foundation, and Jeff Newton, Executive Director of the Tennis Foundation, who will also present the trophy. Thank you. Um, I'm very pleased to be accompanied by Jeff Newton, the Director of the Tennis Foundation, who masterminds our activities. As you know, I comprehensively thanked all our sponsors, staff, and volunteers at the end of the earlier finals today. I will really now repeat our profound appreciation of their individual and their collective efforts directed by Percy Thompson. Thank you very much, all of you. Last 
Lane that she likes uh, twice before this year in Paris, 6'4, six, 6'3, six, and 6'3, six, 6'4 six, in Melbourne earlier in the year. Well, 6'3, well, 6'4 six, six, today. Dita looking like she might get a bit closer in set number two. Potentially could have taken it to a third, but just couldn't quite keep the serve going. So, woman's only lost three times in 2017. Keeps that uh, enviable record going all the way through to the US Open, in singles anyway. So Yui Kamiji is the British Open champion for 2017. The three matches we had on this court have all I been straight sets there. Seems having some junior presentations as well, but the uh, mixed doubles will be among the presentations to come. For the last of the major presentations with Zuzuka and Stefan Hude winning mixed on court number six. If you to take back for Yui Kamiji. Takes a record against Dida de Groot to nine wins and two defeats. All the juniors are going to line up for their presentation. So we yeah, have this and then we'll have the uh, mixed doubles still to come. First day of the January sales behind me. All juniors coming onto the court. We've got their junior British Open as well. Looking for the male and female stars, and of course, uh, quad stars of the future in wheelchair tennis. We're going to get a bit of a look in, and chance to go on centre court. Wimbledon shirts on. That's where they want to be in a few years' time. Right. This may take some time.
remember these faces. Some of them you'll be seeing often again in the future. Scotland, Ellie 
And we're not quite done yet. There will be one more presentation ceremony for the mixed doubles. And at last, British Victor for today. This is Sugar, who was partnered by Frenchman Stefan Houdet. Well, we had to have a British winner one way or the other because Alfie Hewitt was on the other team. But uh, they're going to have to wait now until the. Uh, the juniors are all fleed centre court on their way. Looking for the Pied Piper at the front. <laughs>
6-3-7-5, the score line on court number six, which uh, rounds off the action from the British Open Wheelchair Tennis Championships of 2017. So the winners today, just to recap before we leave you, Gustavo Fernandez in the men's singles, David Wagner in the quad singles, up against Andy Lapthorn and Yui Kamiji in straight sets recently against Dida de Groot. Lucy Shuka and Stefan Uday, the last recipients of their award for 2017. And that rounds off our week in Nottingham. Hope you've enjoyed coverage of the last couple of days. And we'll leave you with the image of the mixed doubles winners from this year, Stefan Uday and Lucy Shuka. Until this time next year, hopefully you'll be back with us then. Thanks for your company this weekend, and goodbye.